G'day folks, welcome to a nice little Sunday autopsy. We have something I found recently, the guts out of the um, 52 inch DLP television that I picked up ages ago. Um, unfortunately the top half of it was in storage, sort of wrapped up out under the carport and got flood damaged. Uh, same with the base half, but the board seemed to have survived. It's just the thing was a dirty mess, so I just decided to get rid of it. The lamp was still going to cost a bit of money to replace, and it's like, nah, why bother with a 52-inch DLP when you can get a 52-inch Samsung plasma for, like, under 400 bucks? Hell, you can get a 52-inch plasma for under the price of a new lamp. So, this thing's basically condemned to parts, essentially, spares, which there are lots of. Good heat sinks, big rectifier, um, plenty of good diodes, trans switching transistors and things, caps. Uh, this is all going to go into just spare parts storage. It's got a hefty uh, input board on the back with plenty of uh, RCA connectors on it and um, there's a flush mount or panel mount D sub connector on it. Uh, plenty of good bits. It's basically just a large switch mode power supply, mains in on this side, mains filtering, rectification and switching, so there's output. This is a hot side here. And that's the uh, cold side, the line, or oh, sorry, that's line side, hot side, that's secondary power side, low voltage. So, yeah, knock that cap over, but yeah, it has been knocked around a bit, but there are still plenty of other good caps on it and everything. The rest of the TV was working fine, it just needed a new lamp and a really good clean up, and since the panel and everything was just trashed, it wasn't really worth it. Uh, DLP is digital light projection, by the way, this isn't like a CRT. Uh, projection TV. It has a single lens and a uh, DLP chip which is the really interesting bit. We'll get into that later but first I'm going to uh, break this down a bit. I'll just remove the boards, get them separate and we'll have a look inside this can here because this appears to be input and output basically your analog digital control converter and everything. This connector here goes over to the um, DLP board or most of these connectors go to the uh, DLP board and drive the uh, digital light projector. So that's sort of the brains, the high tech side of it, or the, um, the digital control side of it. That's all the really serious stuff. This is power, that's input and output. Because we've got, um, it could all, it could just be all input. No, no, it does still have some outputs on it. So you've got audio and all that sort of stuff. You've got HDMI input. Uh, it's mostly just input. You've just probably got direct output from uh, one of the inputs itself just looped straight over. So, yeah, it's barely even an output board. I don't know where the uh, speaker outs or anything else was on this thing, but I think that's all gone. Yeah, it did have built-in speakers, but there was a separate back panel connection block which just had speaker outputs that would have connected into one of these headers here. Nothing special, so, yeah, let's strip it down. Okay, so I've got the analog board out. Pretty straightforward, double layer, plenty of surface mount, resistors and capacitors on the back. Uh, only main chip on there, there's two chips. There's a Mitsumi chip on there. What does that say? MM1631A. And there's a Sony CXA21890. No, 21, 2189Q. So, uh, whatever they are, there's a um, crystal oscillator there, 4 megahertz crystal, so I'm guessing it's a uh, driver for the uh, analog input, because all this feeds straight into here, which has the ADC, the analog digital converter, and even the HDMI input gets its own separate board and everything, really. It's a pretty neat little bit of kit. Not sure what's under there. Obviously, uh, oh, there's a big BGA chip under there. It's like memory there, Samsung. No, that'll be that there. Got a lot of parts on that board. I'll try and get the rest of the can off and uh, separate the digital board, and then we'll have a closer look at it. Might try out a new toy, the uh, USB microscope. Okay, I've got it stripped down, but there's an awful lot of stuff on this board. Trouble is, I'm not a uh, PCB builder or engineer. I'm actually half tempted to send this to Dave, 
EEV blog and just see what he has to say. I'm sure he gets flooded with stuff to tear down, but I mean, this thing, there's not much to it, so it'd make an interesting little uh, video considering he really knows what all of these little parts are and generally, or well, most of them, he knows most of what they are and what they do or can easily find out. Because, uh, yeah, it's not really my foray. That, yeah, way out of focus. That main chip there is a Toshiba TC90A 94TBG made in Japan. And that little heat sink on it. So yeah, I might put this back together again and ship it up to Sydney just in case Dave wants to do a tear down on it because uh, I don't know what half this stuff is. That's definitely the HDMI board. But yeah, I'm guessing because HDMI carries audio and video, I'm guessing one of these is just for video and one of these is for audio. Or vice versa, that could be the audio side of it, that could be the video side of it. Whereas um, normal analog inputs, just you've got separate analog sig signal for video and separate audio, and it can be separated and processed accordingly. But HDMI is all combined, so that board will probably do both of it, split it off, and then send it to this board here for processing. Yeah, interesting stuff. I'll hang on to that. I might message Dave and see if he's interested in it. Well, the USB microscope works okay. Um, I don't have screen capture software set up at the moment, but you can still get a fair idea of uh, what's on a board, especially if you d your eyesight isn't the best. My eyesight's still pretty good, but still, when you get into some of the smartphones and things like that, you can have some have a bit of trouble. A little bit laggy. You can play with the uh, refresh rate on it and the uh, resolution, but overall, it's not too bad. And you can make out the details on the chips fairly easily. Not the best, but still. It does seem to have some kind of auto light adjustment and that sort of thing. I mean, well, focus adjustment. Yeah, you can see it. If I block it out, it does adjust for lighting a bit automatically, but you also have a... Um, potentiometer on here for the LED. Now that's off so I've got enough background lighting here to keep it happy uh, from a long distance away but if I really zoom in and bring that down I've got to actually drop the uh, microscope inside the housing to uh, get closer but that's a bit better. That'll give you a better idea of what's on there. Again, it's a nice little buy, $60 on eBay, uh, can't really go wrong. Yeah. Of course, if you set it right up, you can get in really close and actually do good examinations of pins and solder joints and things like that. Uh, I'll post a link to Dave EEV Blog's um, review in the description, if I remember this time, I think I forgot last time. But overall, it does seem to work quite well, I'm quite impressed with it. So you can inspect the, the pins on the back of that connector there. They're all uh, looking good. Um, obviously, you can zoom a lot more than that. I'll see if I can get a closer look, but I'll see how we go. Yeah, there we go. Without any external light from the um, built-in LED, that's the arse end of that HDMI connector. And you can examine the uh, solder joints fairly well. I mean, if I played with it a bit more, I could probably get more resolution out of it. Uh, this mount is really handy because you can twist it any way you want rotate it any direction on the on the pedestal, raise it up and down. If I bring that out a bit, you can see the back of the socket and all the imperfections on it. Well the surface it's plated steel. Yeah, there we go. You can see all the pins. Wonderful little device. Everyone every geek should own one. If not just for messing around like this, uh, they can be quite handy. I think Dave even proved that you could uh, re-solder using one of them. I haven't tried it myself yet, and I'll certainly try on a scrap board like one of these, but yeah, it's interesting stuff, it works. Anyway, let's get into the uh, DLP side of the television, the light projector. There's not an awful lot on there past the lamp and the lamp housing. Well, at least most of the bulk is the lamp, lamp housing and cooling ducts, but the uh, interesting bit is the chip itself. 
They're really interesting. Okay, so let's get into the uh, projection side of the TV. There's a few interesting parts in here. Uh, lamp's pretty straightforward. It's a uh, xenon lamp by the looks of it. You can see it's had a bit of a whoopsie that's blown out the side and uh, basically destroyed everything. So that lamp's not going to be usable anymore. And again, it's a Toshiba lamp. What is it? Type TB25LPA. Rated 120 watt DC 50 12 watts. So it's probably high tension start and then DC 50 volt arc. Like a uh, headlamp in a car. They have a igniter and a uh, ballast. And this almost looks like it's just straight high voltage, but I'm sure there's a uh, feed off the main power supply that also. Uh, provides a low voltage constant current for the uh, arc. It's also tied into the digital board on the DLP side of things so it must control the intensity of the arc uh, electronically. Um, there's also a colour wheel under there which is a rotating disc with coloured segments on it. They're kind of fascinating. They're also a consumable, pa consumable part in these. I'm sure some of this is worth money to somebody, but again, with uh, flat screen TVs becoming so cheap and prominent, I'd be very surprised if anyone in, anyone around here anyway, at least in Australia, really goes out of their way to fix these. Like, they'd have to have some really good characteristics for people to want to fix them. Um, I've already had this partially apart. It's the main cooling blower for the back of the DLP chip. That's where that heatsink is. And you've got this light guide essentially almost like a yeah like a wave guide to direct the uh, light through the DLP chip and up through the optics so yeah let's uh, strip the rest of this off we'll get the power supply and everything off and expose as much as I can okay so here's one of the interesting bits this is the color wheel assembly I believe this smooths out the spectrum of the light I haven't quite checked up on it but it seems like the only thing that it would really do because you've got the light coming in through the uh, the glass there from the bulb which is going to be pretty rough um, AC frequency induced light like it's an AC lamp I believe and uh, this must obviously smooth it out because you've got red, green, yellow or cyan yeah cyan, magenta and yellow on each of these uh, little segments. They are quite degraded. I can see a lot of pitting and dirt on it, but it is intact. And it's attached to what looks like a little hard drive motor. Permanent magnet uh, DC motor, like a uh, laptop hard drive essentially. It looks like a platter off a laptop hard drive. I'd be willing to bet it's based on the same componentry. So that thing spins at a ridiculous speed and obviously must smooth out the colour spectrum of the light. Uh, I don't believe it can really do much else. It doesn't seem to be movable or... I guess you could tune the speed or the frequency of it, but that's about it. Because uh, the light coming off the arc lamp would be fairly rough and you'd want to uh, obviously smooth it out a bit, so I'm guessing that's what this does. Again, I'm not a DLP expert. I know roughly how they work, like the um, DLP chip itself. I'm never quite bothered looking at what the colour wheel does so I'm sure somebody will correct me I'm probably wrong but yeah it's got a nice little controller on it too I'm not sure how to get it to work though I'm guessing it's PWM uh, based controller it's got a tiny little ribbon cable going in there that actually seems to go to the motor the other thing there must be a uh... oh it's got a hole sensor on it there's a magnet or a um... That little black patch there on the outside of the flywheel, it's got a little optical sensor there which tells it how fast it's running. So that's the feedback for speed control, and that's the actual motor itself. So it's got four wires, it's probably a three or four phase B, um, BLDC, or brushless DC uh, motor, like a hard drive. So anyway, I'll rem carefully remove it, I guess. I don't know. I might just leave all this together or just strip off what I can to show it and then uh, put it back together again because it's a quite fascinating piece of equipment. Not that there's much point in keeping it, 